I'm Tal Raviv, and I'm pleased to have with me Dr. Neeraj Desai here from Millen Eye Centers in Atlanta. And Dr. Desai, I want you to talk today a little bit about uh, one of the shine flow images we have, and that is the G4. We began using the G4 in our practice a few months ago, and we have an existing Pentacam uh, device in our practice as well, as well which is a Scheimflug and a placebo-based imaging system. We incorporated the G4 because of its sort of unique characteristics with the dual Scheimflug camera and the, and the placebo-based system. As Dr. Koch has taught us uh, in the recent past, that posterior corneal astigmatism is extremely important to consider for modern-day cataract surgery. And we have also uh, incorporated femtosecond cataract surgery. So for us, a G4 device sort of completes the picture to get more accurate IOL calculations and more accurate assessment of the corneal profile. Do you see, uh, do you use the posterior corneal numbers to uh, change your planning for toric lenses currently? I do. And one of the biggest changes that we've made is I directly now use the ray traced total corneal power, which is available on the G4 for my astigmatism numbers. I also use that number for my post-LASIK and post-RK patients. And I have seen very good results, although they're anecdotal and we haven't tabulated the results because it's quite a recent addition to our practice. But the patients uh, do quite well and I'm very happy with the numbers I'm seeing coming through. When you say using it for LASIK, how do you mean? The ray trace total corneal power, and there are several variations of them, incorporated into the G4 can be used directly as your K powers for the IOL calculations that you perform. So I've been taking uh, the K powers and plugging them into the IOL master to derive more accurate powers. That's very interesting. Uh, do you still use uh, an IOL calculator or, and when you do, do you just plug in the total ray trace corneal power into that? I do. Uh, I still, uh, in the first few cases, I wanted to compare the Ks between the G4 and the ASCRS calculator as well as doing some back K methods, but I found that the G4 was the most painless and accurate way of getting the Ks. In a post-refractive case? In a post-refractive case, that's correct. So uh, just to repeat, in a post-refractive case you're taking a direct measurement of the cornea with no prior history and using that right into your formula. I am, and that's something that I'm doing. I'm not saying that you should do. <laughs> But I found good results with this, and uh, as we go on, we'll tabulate and refine our data and our technique. So it sounds like uh, the Galilei is something, the G4 is something most cataract surgeons need to use. We've all used it before for refractive screening. And tell me about a little bit the refractive component of it as far as keratoconus screening and other indices that it provides. So the G4 has a built-in, has many, many software programs built into it, and the keratoconus profile is, is one of those. And we're not a very LASIK heavy practice, so I don't see myself using very much of the keratoconus screening. However, for cataract surgery purposes, the total corneal power is what seems to be uh, the case to use and has and really prevented us from refractive surprises that we used to have before. The G4 also helps. It seems to be a bit more efficient because of the unique iris uh, it's sort of an iris registration process where it captures and prevents decentration of the uh, uh, imaging. So it captures the iris and then movement, mild to moderate movement, is neutralized because of that. Thank you. Besides the obvious measurement, we talked about the total case, which I think is an improvement. It's something we all want to get our hands around. Mm -hmm. uh, does this topography do other things like pupillometry or maybe surface analysis, dry eye, anything else? It does, so it's a placebo based as well, so it can give you uh, surface data, and there are many programs built into it where you can access and look at different parameters. Dry eye is something that can certainly uh, ruin your uh, topography, as been, has been shown by many uh, papers and talks. Dry eye can certainly cause pseudoastigmatism, but the G4's imaging has been consistent. We, we tend to take th two or three scans, and we look at them, and we're, we're not really using artificial tears anymore to lubricate the surface as much. We seem to get very quick and reliable measurements and that are reproducible. So we're, we're happy with what we're getting. Well, thank you. It sounds like uh, we're in the era of imaging the anterior ocular surface, whether it's the cornea all the way down to the lens to help us achieve best outcomes. And the G4 seems to do a lot of that for us.